Good morning and welcome to Indexo Investor webinar. We will start with a presentation on Indexo business updates and continue with a live Q&A session. I encourage every one of you to share your questions in the Q&A section on the bottom of your screen. Questions can be submitted either anonymously or with your name. The session is being recorded and will be available for rewatch shortly after the call. That being said, let me now hand over to the management of the company. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's nice to uh, welcome you to our webinar. Uh, I think we have a great, uh, great half a year of 2024, lots of interesting and exciting uh, news to, to report. Uh, but initially, let me say a few words of who we are here. So as you can see, this is the first time we have three people uh, doing this uh, information uh, sharing session uh, with, our, with our investors. Uh, we are joined by Ivita, who is a CFO of our company uh, as of uh, May of this year. I mean, she was previously working at, as a council member. So, uh, so in a way, like we are in feel that we, we are in safe hands that she has already uh, been working with us actually for a long time. And then obviously, uh, Valdis uh, and myself, who have been uh, you know doing this reporting for 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 uh, since we have been. Uh, listed in the in the stock exchange. Uh, in between ourselves, our rules have also changed uh, over the last uh, couple of months. Uh, from the moment when we received a uh, banking license, uh, Valdis has been uh, focusing much more on developing the bank side, and I will uh, give him that space and time and then uh, take care of the the, the day to day business of our our group and also the the pension fund uh, management uh, side of the of our activities. But uh, with that introduction done, let's move on to our uh, results. Um, just a, a, a reminder that uh, we are still very happy to, to be in the, in the pension fund management business, although we are excited also of, of our banking uh, venture. Uh, we are still uh, one of the fastest growing uh, pension fund managers uh, in the Baltics. Our funds are performing really well. Uh, in May, we received a banking license, which means that uh, we will uh, we will be launching uh, banking activities very soon. And more about that later on in our presentation. Uh, we are <clears throat> one of the largest uh, Latvian uh, public companies in terms of uh, shareholders. Our shareholder number is already over six thousand and growing. Uh, and of course, uh, the second quarter and first half of 2024 was also great from a financial point of view, especially for our pension business. Uh, in our banking business, obviously, as we'll talk later, this is still an investment case. Uh, the highlights uh, of the first half of 2024, I will not go over uh, the main parts of it, but, uh, but we are today at uh, 1.15 billion uh, assets under management. Uh, that's obviously uh, drives also our revenue, uh, which uh, for the first half of the, this year was at over 2 million euros. Uh, we are uh, making a profit, uh, both on, uh, on, uh, on before the, the, the uh, group and bank expenses and, and uh, as also a net profit after the group expenses. Uh, our customer growth, uh, growth has been uh, significant, so we are now at almost 135,000 customers. Um, Looking at the growth rates, uh, I think we are extremely pleased to report another solid uh, growth. Uh, if we look at the year on year growth rates, our uh, assets under management have been growing 53%. Our commission income or our revenue is basically 45%, uh, which is good news for, uh, for our shareholders. And if you look back at the five years, uh, then, uh, then really that compounding growth, which we have shown basically uh, year on year, uh, now for, for many years really tells a remarkable story where uh, if we look at over five years, we have grown nine times uh, our assets and the management, our clients have grown six times, our revenue is growing, uh, has grown 8.7 times. And as we are scaling, and now we are there with our pension business, uh, we are also becoming increasingly profitable. Uh, this is also uh, represented here on this slide where we say that uh, we are already fourth quarter in a row uh, profitable uh, after excluding the, the non-pension business. Uh, yeah, uh, this slide shows also that uh, together with the uh, client investment and the management growth, our market share grows. 
we are already at 13% uh, of the total market. So we are the third largest player in Latvian uh, pension, second pillar pension business. And, uh, and uh, we still have room to grow, especially if we look at the fact that uh, our, our client base uh, is, uh, is smaller as uh, in comparison to our market share. That is, of course, due to also the fact that uh, we have uh, extremely good customers who, uh, who have like higher assets in the management. Uh, still looking at the, the, the switching data, how customers join us, then we are doing a good inroad to, to grow further. Uh, we are the largest, the fastest growing second pillar manager in terms of absolute numbers of uh, customers. And also, if you look at the, uh, the total growth in, in our assets under management, our growth rate already in absolute terms is second largest under, after one of the largest, let's say, financial institution in the Baltics. Um, and uh, this sort of uh, repeats the, 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 uh, what I said before, that we are the third largest pension fund manager uh, and, uh, and uh, we are making uh, inroads uh, to, to grow further. Uh, what are the main sources of our growth? So as we like this slide because it tells a story of how things compound in our business, uh, our, our uh, growth in assets under management and thus revenue is grown by uh, monthly contributions. Also, the new clients joining with inflows. Then it's deducted from the customers that are leaving our business uh, with their assets. Uh, and uh, then obviously also the market returns uh, will play a role in, in how our assets grow. And, uh, and now looking into more detail uh, into the growth uh, pillars, then we can see that the monthly contributions are growing nicely. That means that uh, both the, the, the uh, customer number uh, has increased and also the salaries are increasing. That uh, means also that the contributions are growing uh, together with that. Then uh, if we th look at the inflows from new uh, clients, then that's really a, a function of how many customers join us. And then market returns obviously has been uh, the, the predominantly the, the American uh, uh, stock market uh, performance over the last uh, 12 months, which has been extremely strong. We know that there has been certain volatility uh, going on in the last week or two, but uh, as we like to say, you know, pension business is saving in the long term. So short term volatility has no effect on the long term saving gains of, of, uh, of the customers. And to illustrate that point, we also wanted to show you actually what our largest uh, pension fund, uh, Yauda, has, uh, has uh, how it has performed for our customers. So uh, if we take the five years, which for us really is more representative of a kind of a long-term uh, long results of our fund, then we have outperformed both the, the market uh, or our competition in the 100% equity funds category and also uh, the, the uh, consumer price index increase which means that we have actually, in real terms, grown our customer money. And that means that our customers will have a better retirement when, uh, when they get to that age where they need to, to rely on, on their savings. Uh, one of the things that we are really uh, focusing on uh, going forward in the next uh, 12 months is, uh, is managing our churn. Uh, we have been driven by, by very successful growth. That also means that uh, that we are uh, we have clients who maybe not always uh, hundred percent understand the benefits of being our, our customers, despite the fact they're not having a rational reason to join or to leave uh, uh, Indexa. So uh, increased competition when we have grown, we are uh, you know an easier target, and and that means that uh, that there are certain things that we will be improving in our services over the next twelve months to to drive that uh, figure down. Um, then, if we look at really uh, our customer, uh, our customers versus other cust other asset management cu customers, as managing customers, then our uh, clients are the, the uh, with the highest assets, which means that uh, they are uh, you know good earners, they are dedicated savers, and uh, and uh, what uh, what is really important for us in the, in that sense that that also is a kind of very good customer group to talk to uh, about our banking services. Uh, our third pillar, which is the voluntary uh, pension business, is also growing strongly. Uh, that is also something that we will uh, we will start focusing uh, much more once we have launched the, the bank app, uh, because there will be a lot of uh, opportunities to uh, to use the the platform 
for helping people to put themselves on a good saving path. Uh, and uh, very importantly, we can also see that our, uh, our customer number who are doing regular contributions is increasing, which is really good news because it is very important in the third pillar to start saving early and to do it regularly because, you know, with the market volatility, uh, there are always going to be great buying opportunities and you take away also the, the volatility effect in your saving. And uh, maybe I would uh, give over now uh, the, the, the uh, well, actually I will say sort of last uh, last words to regarding the, the uh, financial results that uh, that yeah as as we as told before our revenue is uh, is uh, growing very nicely uh, our um, operating costs are more or less on an administrative level in in the same line in the same level where where they were a year ago. Uh, which means that uh, that we have a uh, significant growth in operating income. Uh, we are still investing uh, into client acquisition, which uh, then is a sort of a cash outflow and a cost for us because we're not uh, capitalizing everything of it. But the pension management operating result is already uh, positive, and that means also that we are making a a real net profit in our pension business uh, at this given uh, period, and uh, this profit should be growing as our assets grow in the future. And then, while this, yeah, thank thank you. And uh, uh, about uh, so far about the pension business, and, and now a little bit about the bank. Uh, as it was mentioned already, uh, obtaining banking license in May. Uh, was probably one of the largest um, achievements in index uh, history. Uh, our prep preparatory works are uh, proceeding according to plan. Uh, so we have joined the SEPA payment system, Visa network. Uh, we are doing uh, tests in, in, in live environment. And uh, we have set the launch date for the bank, which is already less than three weeks uh, away from today. So it's very close. And uh, launching the bank, I believe, will be truly historical moment, not only because uh, it is the first bank in Latvia launched in uh, more, than, more than a decade, uh, and not only because it, that it is the first uh, bank launch uh, since Latvia joined Eurozone, but this is actually the very first instance when publicly listed company owned by um, uh, thousands of uh, Latvian uh, investors are launching a new bank and basically entering direct comp competition with uh, much larger uh, regional players uh, at the moment. Uh, so despite the fact that the licensing took longer than we anticipated, and actually we are able to launch bank uh, later than we initially anticipated, it is still a perfect time to launch a new bank in Latvia. And firstly, because this is a very holistic market with uh, four large players con controlling in some instances almost 100% of the market, this is very profitable market and uh, limited competition, competition, high profit, profitability, uh, that, that is an uh, uh, invitation basically to compete that. Uh, lending opportunity, we have spoken about that a lot. Latvia is in the uh, last position in Eurozone when it comes to loans to GDP ratio. So Latvian economy needs a lot of new lending both for uh, corporate and, and, and household customers. And, and we see that opportunity. And uh, uh, the, the one market which we compare ourselves a lot is Estonia. And one difference, what we can see that in Estonia, there are a number of uh, sort of local competitors, local champions, uh, which are uh, increasing uh, competition and, uh, and also forcing the the uh, foreign players to, to be more competitive. And um, that is what uh, Latvian market lacks. And I think we are well positioned to take that position. And, and uh, about the interest rates, of course, as a consumers, we may not like high, high rates. Of course, rates are decreasing a little bit, but uh, they, they will, will remain rather high for uh, foreseeable future, and which is good news for, uh, uh, for us uh, launching a new bank because it positively is going to affect our profitability. And uh, 
this is not only a perfect time to launch a new bank, but it is almost a self-evident next step for, for Indexo because we are so well positioned actually to do that, to enter the banking market. And first of all, because of our uh, existing customer base, Henrik already mentioned, this is 134, actually 135,000 large. And it's not only large, it's, it's a very good, very high quality uh, customers. Uh, assets under management for our pension savers are more than 50% 50, 50 higher than average in the market. And also current sales channels are, are really well uh, positioned to sell not only uh, pension products, but also banking products. And we even believe that having much wider product offering will not uh, only help, the, as I mentioned, the banking products, but it will help also selling, selling the pension products. There are more, more ways how to start the conversation and more ways how to, how to uh, invite customer to join Indexo as a group. And uh, our brand uh, is uh, well known in Latvia. It's positively perceived and uh, different market surveys shows that uh, uh, on top of our existing customer base, there is still a very significantly large group of people which are positively uh, disposed uh, towards starting uh, cooperation with Indexo as a group, uh, not only pension products, but also looking at other services we, we may offer. And uh, when it comes to IT, uh, so we uh, we are, since we are starting from scratch, we don't need to deal with any past legacy systems. We can build the most, and we are building the most modern uh, cloud native IT infrastructure. And uh, those are not only fancy words, but I think the most visible part where our customers will feel the difference is our mobile app, uh, our, our, uh, which will be the main tool in the beginning how the uh, customers will be able to interact with the bank. And um, as I mentioned, we are piloting our services already and, and uh, I've been using uh, our app in a live environment with, with a real money, real payments uh, already almost two weeks, and, and I can say that this uh, works very well. Uh, it almost creates uh, addiction to, to, to check different things, to, to experiment, to make a payments because it works so, so well. And uh, it is indeed fantastic. And I, 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 I'm sure that um, most of you who will able, will be able to try it after 28th of August will have a similar opinion. So our app has uh, more than 1,500 screens. And believe me, that's a lot for a mobile application. And that shows that we have thought about different products and services and different scenarios uh, using so, uh, those services our customers may experience. And uh, we will launch that uh, with all most important banking services uh, already in the beginning and then add more as we as we go in the coming uh, months uh, and, uh, and years and so on. So in the beginning, we'll have bold term deposits for, for savings with very attractive rates. Uh, consumer loans uh, also will be completely built in our app and actually uh, uh, with fully automated decision making and uh, the decisions will be made in seconds uh, instead of hours and sometimes days, what is your current market standard. We'll have a Visa cards, and, and I'm also already a user of one of, one of those, and, and, and all works fine. Uh, our app is clean and native uh, app without any web-based screens, etc. So it will work on uh, iOS and Android uh, uh, phones, devices, and uh, that, that will be a truly, uh, truly native. And uh, when we speak about the payments, uh, when we uh, started to work on our mobile application, we made a number of market surveys. And interestingly, the payments was something people liked the most about their app and also hated. I mean, uh, existing apps available in the market. And when we dig, it, it, looked, it sounds paradoxical in the beginning, but when we dig deeper into that issue, people liked the payments uh, through their app if they paid to the known receivers, uh, repeat the payments, uh, payments within the same bank, but they start hating their app 
when they have to make international payments to another bank in Europe, to unknown receiver, to receiver in, in another bank, etc. And we have really worked hard and I think we have cracked the problem and uh, our app users will like uh, our payments, <clears throat> sorry, in, 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 in all instances. At least uh, I'm enjoying that uh, already. Uh, and, and here I will give a, give a word to, to Evita to tell a bit more about our financial results. Yeah, thank you, Valdis. And uh, I am very happy to be here today with my colleagues uh, to present you the first interim report of the bank. So let's try to find out what has been the result. And of course, as you know, the bank has not started yet the operations, so which means that we do not generate any operating income. But we are very uh, happy to see the line commission and fee income with the nine euros, which is the income from our first two customers, because at the end of the June, the bank had already two customers. But despite that, of course, the bank continued uh, very large uh, IT investments to secure uh, the bank's development, because as you can understand, the IT investments is the largest uh, category uh, of the expenses when you build the bank. And as you can see, our administrative expenses this year have been almost 2 million euros, and out of that, 40% has been the IT expenses. And the rest, the, the, another biggest part is the personnel expenses, which has been around 60%. And obviously, because of that, the bank's uh, loss for the reporting period uh, has been at uh, 2.1 uh, million euros. If you look into our balance sheet, then here you can see also that the bank's capital has been invested in intangible assets, which also is predominantly our IT infrastructure. And from there, uh, the three largest items is our uh, wonderful mobile app that all this has been mentioning to you. Uh, the another largest item is our customer relationship management system. And then the third largest item is our core banking system. And these three parts together make approximately one third of these total uh, investments. So the total is 3.1 million over all the years we have been working on the bank's development. And out of that, 1.2 million has been invested only this year when we escalated uh, the investments because we got the license. And then the rest of the capital we keep in a central bank as a liquidity reserve. And then also on the balance sheet, we can see the impact from our two customers. So you, you see that we have a deposits of 11 euros. So of course we are also happy for that. And uh, that of course is the line in the balance sheet. We want to see uh, uh, growth every time we will be delivering to you the, our results. And of course for the bank, it's very important what happens with our capital. And we believe that we have built it very adequately for our start of the operations. And at the end of the June, we comfortably fulfill all the regulatory requirements related to liquidity and capital. And as you can see from the slide, for the first 12 months, we have been uh, setting higher internal uh, minimum for the capitally adequate requirement. And this is to be prepared for the ICAP and SREP processes that we will have uh, later uh, next year, most probably in the first half of the year. And then after those, then our bank's individual capital requirement will be set. But then, of course, in the longer term, uh, we look more to uh, the level of 14 to 15% as a capital adequacy ratio to be able to ensure continuity of the bank's operations and also uh, ability to generate adequate return for our shareholders. So I am very excited uh, to have the bank open. So Valdis, would you like to tell more about our launch event? Uh, yeah. Okay. T today we today we scratch just the surface, and and of course we also don't want to reveal all the cards right now. So uh, uh, we have a lot of very important and, and positive news to you on uh, on the twenty twenty eighth of uh, August coming. Uh, so as I said. I think it will be a truly historical event because uh, indeed uh, the publicly owned company owned by thousands of uh, Latvian investors is entering this banking market and, and, and trying to uh, take the Latvian uh, compete in, in Latvian financial markets uh, with market with uh, international players like we did before uh, with, um, where, when we entered the pension pension business. Uh, so uh, a lot of uh, positive news ca coming. So uh, use the QR code uh, to register for, for this event. And we believe that we will be watched by thousands uh, online. Uh, 
uh, and uh, there will be also a lottery uh, for lucky uh, 200 uh, who will be able to join our event uh, physically. Uh, and uh, please, uh, when you register, you, you have a chance to uh, to click uh, uh, if you if you are interested to uh, to participate in that lottery and be uh, one of those um, lucky two hundred. So uh, that is uh, all what we wanted to tell you. So I hope you to see see, see and uh, see you hear you very very soon already uh, in our event on, on 28th, which is already less than three weeks away. Okay, thank you, Valdis. Thank you, uh, Evita. I think it's a good opportunity to go to the questions that, uh, that there are many. And uh, why don't I uh, uh, give Valdis a sort of a pick uh, from all those because the, there's uh, mostly uh, bank related and then uh, we, can, we can see uh, meanwhile also mm. whether there's anything else that we want to cover. Uh, I, I think, um, yeah. Yes, thank you for the presentation. Uh, exciting times ahead. Uh, let's start with the most popular question that we have received from the audience. When will you start offering banking services to the general public? And is the launch date August 28th already set or it's just the forecast? Uh, uh, so the 28th is the date uh, and, uh, and uh, we are, we are w w working towards that and, and the date is set. Uh, of course, if we if we think of any nightmare scenarios, uh, there is always things uh, which which may may change uh, whatever plans. Uh, but uh, but uh, update is set, and and twenty eight it is. Thank you. What services does Indexo Bank plan to offer upon launch? Uh, yeah, as it was mentioned already in a presentation, uh, we will start with servicing uh, private, Latvian residents, private individuals, and uh, it will be all the most uh, popular daily banking services, uh, including consumer loans. Uh, mortgages will not be available at the launch date, but they will follow a uh, few months later because we have that process already uh, that, that product well well in process uh, but it'll take another uh, couple of months after the launch to uh, to uh, to start offering that uh, that product who are the targeted or the potential customers of the new bank yeah uh, as I said, uh, the physical persons, the private individuals, uh, Latvian residents, um, and uh, uh, as the mobile app uh, will be uh, the main tool how to interact with the bank. So uh, that must be somebody who has a smartphone and uh, feels comfortable with with using the, the mobile applications. So I, I don't want to say that there is uh, 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 there is anybody unwelcome, but but of course uh, this will be a <laughs> precondition really to to enjoy our services. Yeah. From private persons to companies, when and how will the financing of companies begin? Uh, of course, in uh, several years, in in three four years, we want to be the bank that provides uh, all most important or all traditional banking services to all customer groups, including uh, companies of uh, different sizes. And uh, we are starting with the private in individuals because of the two reasons. First of all, that that is our existing customer base, and actually, it's a little easier from IML and other perspectives to design the service for the private individuals. But actually step from uh, going from private individuals to companies is not that big. And uh, we believe we will be able to make that in six to nine months uh, after the launch. So uh, tentatively, it's not a uh, specific date set, but tentatively that uh, that should be somewhere in the beginning of the of the next year. Uh, let's talk about the competition. How do you plan to compete with the banking giants? Yeah. I, I think, uh, I th as, I, uh, we, we, as I mentioned, I think it's a right time to enter the banking market. It's a very profitable market, limited competition. 
and we have a lot lots of reasons uh, why uh, uh, everybody in Latvia should actually try out our services. But uh, as I said, we don't want to reveal all our cards right now. Uh, on 28th, I will tell you more, and I think there is a lot of uh, positive new news coming. I think I wanted to add here also that uh, I don't think that we need to view the market as a sort of a constant pie that, uh, that you know, if you put your knife in there and try to cut a piece, you uh, inherit to take away something from somebody else. I mean, the same way like the pension business has grown, I think the total market uh, when we launched was around, let's say, 3 billion uh, assets under management. Now it is uh, almost 8 billion assets under management, the same with the bank banking market. I mean, it's growing all the time together with uh, people's income growth together with the nominal growth of the economy. And so we have actually, we don't need to see it as a sort of a, like if we get something, we'll take something away from uh, from another player. Mm -hmm. When would you expect banking business to become profitable? Um, uh, we have uh, communicated uh, during our capital raises, uh, the, the long-term fi financial plan, uh, I think uh, that is that is what we what we have said about it, and, and actually there is no no much to add. I don't think there was a specific break even even they calculated, but uh, uh, but the, the balance sheet of few hundred uh, hundred million uh, euros is is uh, the, the moment where where uh, it can be, can be achieved. Mm -hmm. And, that, and, uh, yeah. what, what is also very important to emphasize what, what uh, Henrik tried to explain today, of course, the bank uh, has only costs right now, no income. So, so bank is, uh, is losing money, but our, our pension business is already making significant profits and uh, will be able to, to, to support the bank uh, going, uh, going forward. Uh, on the pension business topic, uh, do you plan to increase your share there? Uh, in the pension business, absolutely. We uh, we believe that uh, we have a very good product. Uh, and, uh, that means that there's still a lot of customers out there who would benefit uh, from the from our approach to to the savings uh, market. And uh, and I think we will have. Uh, I'm really hopeful that we will have also like some product development features which will make us again stand apart from uh, from the rest of the market uh, in the next uh, six months. Mm -hmm. What are the saving opportunities and what are the potential returns? Uh, uh, okay, it uh, depends uh, if you talk about the, uh, the, uh, the pension business, then, then Henrik can comment. But uh, for, a, for a bank, uh, we, will, we will have a fixed, uh, fixed income saving, saving opportunities. And uh, of course, as a new entrant in the market, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll need to, or, and we intend to do it with, um, uh, with a more, more attractive rates than competition, established competition right now in the market. And again, uh, let's keep intrigue until 28. I think we'll have a very, very nice, uh, nice news coming your way. And from the uh, app uh, point of view, uh, then uh, then the pensions is has a sort of a central role as well in in the in our bank uh, product offering. So we believe that uh, obviously everybody should say uh, on top of the second pillar, also in the third pillar uh, products, and we will have a very convenient uh, way of how you can top up your uh, third pillar pension uh, pension plan, how you can. Uh, actually uh, you know make the regular payments how you can get information about it and uh, I think it's going to be super super convenient super easy to to uh, make it uh, take that problem away from you uh, in terms of how to manage it and, and uh, just automate it and and uh, I still want to uh, uh, underline and reiterate that our product is the most uh, 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 let's say um, progressive product in the market in terms of automatic uh, rebalancing which is uh, for every individual unique, uh, dependent on their age, uh, incomes, uh, uh, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Continuing on the profitability topic, what profit margins are expected in the first five years to consider this a success? Um, I, I think we will we will more measure our success in the beginning in terms of volumes and market shares, and, and then the profits, uh, profits uh, will come. 
I think uh, uh, our plan uh, for the bank, which we communicated in in uh, uh, beginning uh, uh, end of the last year, I think uh, that plan still stands. Uh, this is very, I think, rather careful conservative assumptions. Uh, I think we can we can uh, we can uh, do better than that, and uh, probably number of customers, uh, deposit volumes. Uh, would be the key metrics uh, in the beginning. And now in a high interest rate environment, uh, that is where uh, all banks, including ourselves, can make, uh, can make profits. That's how, how we start. That's, that's also the fuel for, for the lending. We need uh, customers uh, also keeping their money, account balances, deposits with us to be able to, to, to lend. What will be the bank's strategy for mortgage lending to individuals for the construction of energy efficient homes? Uh, de definitely, I, I think uh, the mortgage market is uh, is the, the large part of the uh, lending problem in, in Latvia. If we compare to Estonia, then where, uh, with a smaller population, uh, the market is twice bigger, twice higher the uh, mortgage volumes. So we see a lot of opportunities, and including an ef energy efficient uh, uh, housing. And I think we'll we'll, uh, we'll uh, think of uh, uh, we'll come up with uh, with a, um, a solutions how to make it uh, super attractive. And uh, there is also what we have uh, communi communicated before. We have also we see a lot of opportunities also in remortgaging uh, 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 real estate, which has been um, already paid down fully or partially, or uh, mortgaging and doing so-called equity release loans uh, for the real estate uh, which the customers already uh, already own. But uh, yeah, if I may add here, uh, just uh, bear with us in the sense that we want to, of course, start lending uh, mortgages uh, or like you know give out mortgages as soon as possible. But uh, we are a little bit dependent on the funding side of the bank, right? Because uh, because mortgages tend to be like a longer term uh, credits, which means that our funding really needs to to evolve to the deposits and, and not only overnights for us to actually start extending those uh, those uh, credits. We need to see the kind of like the, the stability of our, our funding base evolve. So that's why we would like to start to doing it uh, from day one, but uh, it really is uh, driven a little bit by our growth. So uh, that's an important notion to have in mind. Mm -hmm. A participant would like to know whether you would be able to take over liabilities from other banks. Uh, absolutely. When it comes to the the mortgages, I think it's uh, it's uh, meant for the, the the refinancing. Absolutely, I think that 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 is also a huge opportunity because uh, I know also among uh, my friends and relatives, uh, somebody who took a mortgage ten years ago uh, as uh, fifty percent paid down, the the margin is still the uh, same old high, and uh, banks are very very unwilling to renegotiate anything. So. So uh, I think we see opportunities to uh, refinancing such uh, mortgages, offering lower rates, longer extended uh, repayment schedules, maybe increasing the, the amount of at the moment of refinancing. There is a lot of opportunities, and I think we'll be a very active player in that. Uh, but that, that will mostly uh, start, I think, next year, because right now, uh, because of those uh, uh, mortgage uh, rebates or subsidies offered by uh, through the, the, the bank tax, which is enforced this year, uh, very few are actually willing to refinance right now. But next year, the, the situation will be uh, completely different. Mm -hmm. From services to your shareholder structure, who holds the majority of shares? And are Swedish banks also among the shareholders? We we haven't really followed up like uh, in that uh, detail uh, to our shareholder list because uh, yeah it's a public company so we we uh, it changes every day uh, so maybe the Swedish banks are quietly uh, buying a couple of shares in in our company but uh, because we are a great investment opportunity 
But, uh, but at least they are not uh, visible anywhere. Uh, we are a truly public company, so it's a huge free float. Uh, we Nobody exercises any control, uh, significant control over, over the company. Nobody controls over 51% of, of the company. So I think if we look at uh, individual uh, individual shareholders, then Waldis and myself, I suppose, are the, the, the largest uh, shareholders. But... Uh, but again, we this is a public company where uh, corporate governance is built uh, from the perspective of, of uh, every shareholder. Uh, uh, even if you have one share, you you must you feel that uh, that your rights are as well represented as as those who hold uh, hundred or thousand shares. Yeah, but but uh, again, we are almost uh, six thousand uh, shareholders. A company dominantly Latvian smaller uh, retail uh, retail investors and uh, and uh, this is truly local bank uh, where the shareholder meeting uh, the, the board in, in um, uh, selected by the by the shareholders uh, is is managing the comp- uh, supervising the management board and, and management board so we are we are truly local bank uh, going to actually uh, fight or challenge uh, those uh, dominant Swedish banks like we did and are doing in a pension management business. Mm -hmm. Can you please tell us more about the investment services potentially offered by the bank? Are there any plans and forecasts about the possibility to invest through Indexo Bank? And are you planning any investment section in the new app? Uh, definitely, I think it's a, it's a very important uh, part of, of our story. I mean, we want to allow people to have, uh, or our customers to have, like you know, the best services in the market, uh, and uh, and uh, give them access to 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 uh, financial tools to empower them to to take their own decisions. Um, it is not going to be the product that we will launch in the first, uh, let's say, twelve months of our of our banking development. Uh, we are uh, scouting, we are building relationships with service providers. Uh, uh, we will not develop this product uh, within, the, in, within our own organization because, I, frankly, I think there are very good uh, opportunities uh, out there, uh, both from technical side, from, uh, from pricing side. So uh, we are looking to, to most probably cooperate with somebody who will provide that as a white label service. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, so this is as far as I would go. It is on our map. We are discussing uh, discussing uh, with different service providers the the ideas, and we will put it into the you know fixed development plan uh, soon enough. I mean, we obviously being a public company, we would love to to offer a service for all our shareholders to to keep the the shares with us and to to also be able to trade with our shares through our application. It's a priority for us uh, from that perspective. Mm -hmm. One of the attendees refers to a quote, the end of low interest rate era. And the question is the following. Will the banking business offer its clients to invest funds in money market funds to capitalize on the interest rates? Uh, again, I think we'll, we'll expand our uh, all sort of savings and investment product uh, offering going forward. On day one, uh, it will be uh, more traditional banking services, uh, uh, vaults, uh, current accounts and uh, term deposits, but uh, we'll have a competitive, uh, very competitive and interesting message on, on, on 28th. And of course, again, we'll expand the product offering uh, going uh, going forward. So, so uh, uh, please, um, I think uh, uh, I understand. We ourselves also want everything, uh, every possible thing on on day one ready. But uh, we need to be patient, and please also be patient uh, that we have to uh, build that. Uh, huge offering step by step and launch with uh, something which is uh, already meaningful and reasonable and then add all the nice uh, fancy things one by one uh, going forward. But uh, yeah, I think it's important to reiterate that we have also selected uh, the, the product offering from a point of view, like let's say what a customer needs, let's say for operating 98% of its time of their time 
uh, within a bank uh, services realm. And, uh, and I think uh, uh, like our services are also designed to solve problems uh, that exist and where mm -hmm. we can really do it uh, quickly for our customers. Mm -hmm. A very practical question. When I will get my shareholder card and will it also be a debit card or similar, like two in one? Uh, so um, uh, we will tell tell more about the features of our cards also on 2028, but it will be it'll be really two in one. It'll be same card as uh, or, or even maybe better because it's shareholder's card as as other cards. And uh, it'll be on 28th already during onboarding process. Uh, uh, you will be identified if you have invested as a private individual uh, during onboarding pro uh, process, you'll be uh, identified as a shareholder which qualifies for the card and you'll be offered the, that opportunity and you'll be able to, to receive your uh, shareholders card and other benefits uh, uh, already at that moment. Mm -hmm. Since there are many investors present at the call, will the investors enjoy some specific benefits from banking services? Uh, yeah, there is this uh, special uh, shareholder offer, but it goes for, um, for the, the ones which uh, had more than 50 shares at the end, uh, at the completion of our la last uh, fundraising round, uh, which completed in er early January uh, this year, and that those uh, those uh, shareholders will will have a uh, right, not obligation, but right to choose the special design card, and they will also have. Uh, uh, other benefits, discounts, uh, which will tell more, uh, more also on twenty twenty eight. What exactly that will be? Mm -hmm. How much share options are left to be released? Uh, I I have to have to check uh, e exactly uh, that uh, figure. Uh, I I cannot recall, but we have. Uh, three, uh, uh, two basically, uh, two uh, uh, option programs. The first is fully exhausted and, and uh, fully used, or almost fully used. Very, very few options left, and uh, on the last two are uh, are still uh, again okay, a second program which consists of two steps. Uh, and uh, how it works, it, it has been approved by shareholders and it can be seen as shareholder res uh, resolution. So they are somewhere uh, half uh, halfway. But uh, I, unfortunately, I, I'm not prepared right now to give exact uh, figures. But uh, again, just to uh, to remind uh, those uh, listeners or investors, so so those uh, the second uh, second layer of options uh, are driven by uh, by the the share price, so they are out of the money at the moment and uh, rely on on the uh, for the, the the management team who are benefit beneficial beneficiaries of those options to 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 only gain in case that the share share price will increase uh, and in in some sense quite significant so but we find it uh, uh, motivational what is the long term goal of the indexo bank in terms of market share acquired in latvian banking sector Again, I would say that uh, official communication is based on uh, what we what we communicated, and that that uh, shows that in uh, four or five years, if we if we get uh, four or five percent of uh, deposit market share, uh, the bank uh, certainly will be profitable. At the same time, my humble opinion is that is uh, that is very uh, conservative assumption, and we should aim for more. Uh, we should aim for uh, over a time for a similar market shares than we have in a in pension management uh, pension management business. But uh, internally, we 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 have discussed that most likely uh, once we have launched the bank somewhere in uh, in uh, in uh, late autumn when we're preparing also the budget for next year, we will actually do an update on on our financial bills uh, and uh, then release it also to all the shareholders. Mm -hmm. Talking about the people driving the business, how many employees does Indexo Bank have? 
So uh, at the end of the June, uh, the bank had 53 uh, full-time equivalent number of people. Mm -hmm. What is the bank's people strategy in this scarce and competitive labor market to execute the strategy and succeed? Will you acquire foreign experience to fill the competence gaps? I think I think it's a very very good question, and and, uh, and I think uh, we we may go almost for 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 an hours to 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 answer that. But uh, I think uh, what uh, people we are trying to find, of course, we need uh, we need experience, and sometimes uh, the experience uh, can be obtained uh, working uh, in another banks uh, and so on, and we we try to have the right mix. But um, uh, we we try to find a, uh, people with uh, with the right spirit. Uh, I mean, uh, our our mission is to uh, to fight for a better financial environment in in Latvia, and we want to, uh, people who really truly believe in in the positive changes we are making and uh, and uh, approaches that, that 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 job the same way. Uh, just to remind how Excel was built. Uh, we just try to be, uh, try to create the pension product we ourselves are uh, happy to use, and that was the time we paid the highest fees, and uh, returns were miserable actually. And uh, looking at the at the situation of the problem uh, from a customer perspective, trying to solve the customer problem uh, uh, was the way how uh, we became actually a success successful company, and we we tried to uh, we. We really try hard to keep that mindset, that that uh, way about thinking about uh, the, the 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 opportunity. Of course, uh, we we pay fixed salary, but uh, we we are the, the the we already mentioned about the option programs. I think the option programs also are good good motivator, and uh, uh, especially the second one, as Henrik mentioned, is currently out of money. We have to do a lot of good things, uh, be successful with the bank. And then uh, that will be very rewarding for our uh, uh, 6,000 shareholders, our 6,000 investors. And it will be rewarding also for, uh, for employees and, and people working here. So it's, um, uh, for me personally, I think of course, this is, uh, this is a business opportunity as well, but I think it's, uh, it very well coincides with this uh, uh, very positive, important, uh, uh, social agenda. I think the pension market is completely different as it used to be seven years ago. I would say that as of today, that is the only segment uh, in a financial industry where we can see a true competition for, uh, for every customer. Finally, everybody wants to have everybody as their uh, banking, uh, as a pension customer. We don't see that at all in the banking. So, so, uh, I think we can uh, we can do a lot of um, positive things there, and and, and uh, that is uh, that is motivating actually for uh, for uh, a lot of people, also the ones who are, who are joining us as, as employees. So so sometimes we we of course as you notice we send the ads out and and some positions is not that easy to fill in, but then there are also instances when the people are applying themselves. They say, okay, I have that experience. Do you have something for me to do in 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 index or bank? Mm -hmm. It's it's sounds like a fun, you really to, to be part of this uh, part of this uh, new project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, the last question that we have received. So once again, about the trading opportunities potentially offered by the bank, would I be able to buy stocks through the through my bank accounts? And what about the crypto in the future? Uh, yeah, so uh, as I said before, we it's in our, uh, let's say, to-do list. Uh, we are uh, exploring the opportunities to, to, to integrate, uh, let's say, white label service provider with our app in the, in the future. Uh, we have not uh, put it uh, on a uh, in a very defined schedule. Uh, definitely, there will be possibility to buy stock, stock through Index app in the future. Um, what is the, the kind of a, like, uh, let's say that the product that we will launch in that, uh, in that segment, uh, you know, uh, uh, we are not uh, absolutely sure yet. You will definitely be able to buy and sell. So trade, yes. Uh, 
uh, whether crypto is going to be part of our product offering, uh, that remains to be seen and how the crypto market develops and what are the, the, the let's say, what we would uh, consider uh, safe uh, products that, that, that our customers uh, would benefit because we, we really are adamant you know, in a way that we want to empower customers, but we want to empower them in a positive way so, uh, so that we wouldn't really... Uh, definitely consider all the crypto market as something that is uh, positive in uh, for our customers. Um, I think like sort of if you are a uh, if a, if if the the, the the person who is asking this question is going to be is a sort of active trader, then most probably we will not be providing a very deep professional uh, uh, you know trading uh, platform uh, like the like the, the interactive brokers or, or some others that are are huge because uh, we 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 don't feel that we will be able to add anything on or, or uh, what is already done you know by by some of the really uh, focused players in this uh, in this realm. Mm-hmm. And another question from a participant. Why are indexo fees higher now compared to other pension funds? And what motivates customers not to switch if product is the same? Uh, I'm not sure that, uh, what, uh, what, what do you mean that higher now compared to other pension funds? Uh, there are, as you know, uh, the, the, the pension fund legislation in, uh, in Latvia is uh, determining the, uh, the uh, fund fees uh, dependent on the... On the um, volume so uh, there are let's say some large players whose yes because of the size of their assets and the management direct management fees that they have been uh, charging are maybe a little bit uh, a few basis points lower than uh, than us but uh, but we are also reducing constantly uh, our fees uh, the other thing that uh, i would really encourage people to look at is the uh, ongoing cost figure of uh, of uh, of funds that is actually the, the true measure of how much the customer is losing between the middleman or between their money and the, uh, the, the their stake in the, the financial uh, markets. And I think we are constantly focusing on uh, reducing our ongoing cost figure. And I'm absolutely certain that we're extremely competitive uh, there. And I think like sort of the other thing is uh, look at uh, look at our performance. Uh, you might say that we wouldn't like to talk about our performance because uh, we are not active managers. We're just providing a a market uh, market uh, uh, let's say results. But uh, but there are still the, the a lot of the competition are pretending that they are active managers and adding value. And if you look at long term. Uh, long-term results of our funds, then you can see actually that uh, that uh, their approach does not really benefit the customers in, in, uh, in long-term as much as they would like to uh, believe. Mm-hmm. And I also uh, like to say that, okay, uh, the, the, even if the competition lost uh, or criticized us uh, in the beginning that the index funds are such a bad idea for, for uh, Latvian pension markets, so no, uh, very many of them, or almost everybody in a second or third pillar, are doing something with a with index funds. But then, then again, be careful uh, when something is called e- called indexed product. It not always truly is that it's kind of indexed, but we make some ac- active choices, like we are more uh, green or more more this, more uh, more, more 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 that. Uh, so. Uh, not every, basically not everything which is called index is really uh, truly truly uh, possibly managed but uh, but yeah so uh, I would say like uh, don't forget uh, to 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 uh, ask your pension fund manager about the ongoing cost figure I mean I think that's really important we brought this uh, standard of transparency to uh, to our to the market so to, to empower again customers to, to, to make the right choice. Uh, there are always nuances in terms of like you know how the, the, the fund is what the fund is composing of. Uh, there has been certain uh, move towards the uh, the uh, life cycle uh, fund management, uh, which uh, uh, we are not uh, 100% uh, certain that that is really the, the right way how to manage. Uh, let's say customer uh, funds. Uh, I mean, the third pillar fund uh, management style that we are doing uh, with Indexo is the perfect product. Uh, it's an individual account, and, uh, and but uh, but this is really like something that we will uh, we will hopefully be able to announce uh, some new uh, new approach uh, very soon uh, from our side. Thank you. All questions are now answered.
it's always a pleasure to see such an active engagement. So, so thank you, participants. The recording of the webinar will soon be available. Please follow Indexo announcements to stay up to date with company's news. On behalf of Indexo, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.